Hey everyone, it's Tyler, the Antenna Man, and today I'm going to show you Next Gen TV in Syracuse, New York. I took a trip there a few weeks ago to show the new over-the-air TV standard in action. If you're seeing me for the first time, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. I try to post videos every Tuesday and Friday. This video is sponsored by TicTech.com, featuring the Rockspace Tri-Band Whole Home Mesh Wi-Fi system. It maximizes your Wi-Fi speed using three units around your home on different bands. It also features a parental control function which allows you to set time limitations or block devices to limit your kids' time on the internet. Follow my link in the pinned comment or description of this video to the Rockspace Whole Home Mesh Wi-Fi system. Get a special discount by copying the promo code in the Tic Tech link and then pasting that code when clicking the buy on Amazon button. So a brief summary on what ATSC 3.0 or Next Gen TV is. It's a new over-the-air TV standard that's set to replace the current ATSC 1.0 standard we use in the United States. The definition of a standard is pretty much the way a broadcast signal is sent to and decoded by a TV set. ATSC 1.0 is the main over-the-air TV standard that's been around for about two decades. Prior to the digital transition of 2009, analog NTSC was used. Features of the new next-gen TV standard include better reception, more channels, 4K video, and mobile viewing on the go. As a heads up, this video is mainly to showcase next-gen TV in Syracuse and how it relates to the future of over-the-air TV. Please don't rush out and buy a new TV or other equipment as we are still in the very, very early stages of this thing. There isn't much equipment out there to pick up these new signals. What is out there still has some major bugs to be worked out, both on the broadcasting and receiving side. For example, my HD Home Run Connect 4K couldn't decode sound on my computer. Only certain devices can support the new audio codec of Next Gen TV. In addition, the current 1.0 broadcast won't be going anywhere for at least another 10 years. If you want to learn more information about this, I attached a video in the description that explains how the launch of Next Gen TV is very different than the digital transition of 2009. In Syracuse, NBC affiliate WSTM, CBS affiliate WTVH, and ABC affiliate WSYR are all broadcasting a Next Gen signal. Since WSTM hosts the Next Gen signal, their main and sub channels are simulcast and ATSC 1.0 on WTVH and WSYR. What's ironic is I filmed parts of this video on the last day of analog television in the United States, so there were technically three generations of TV standards operating in the same market for a little bit. In my hotel, I had no problem picking up the next-gen signal with a small antenna I bought from Dollar General. Here's WSTM, here's WTVH, and here's WSYR. WSTM and WTVH were both broadcasting in 1080i, while WSYR was broadcasting in 1080p. I noticed WSYR wasn't picked up as easily as the other channels and would occasionally crash my VLC media player. This channel might be on a less robust layer than the other two channels. For those of you who don't know, the new next-gen TV standard allows multiple layers. There's sort of an inverse relationship with picture quality and how robust the signal is. WSTM seemed to have the best signal out of all three. The 1.0 signal as shown on the right of the screen would break up as I walked around my hotel room while the next-gen signal remained solid. In order to showcase the mobile aspect of this new standard, I rigged up my car with an antenna connected to a splitter going to the HD Home Run Connect 4K for the next-gen signal and the Amatic Digital Converter Box for the ATSC 1.0 signal. An AV capture card fed both tuners into my laptop and the HDMI recorder captured everything. While setting everything up, I noticed the 1.0 signal would drop out whenever a bus passed my car. A situation very familiar to many people using indoor antennas. This is caused by multipath interference when an out of sync signal is reflected off a nearby object, sort of confusing your tuner. A few common causes of multipath interference include nearby cars, planes, trains, tall buildings, and trees. The new next-gen TV standard eliminates this problem altogether. 
As I drove around downtown Syracuse, there were no problems at all with the next-gen signal, while the 1.0 signal was very unreliable. It could only be decoded when my car was near a complete stop. As I drove on the highway, the next-gen signal remained solid, unlike the 1.0 signal, with one exception that I'll explain here. Some of you may be wondering how I'm able to pick up the current 1.0 standard, which is pictured on the right, while I'm driving my car on the highway. It's because I'm so close to the broadcast tower, it's literally right there, and there's nothing affecting the signal as I'm driving in a clear line of sight. This changes as there start to become trees or if I go underneath a bridge. If there's any kind of multipath effect, that totally kills the signal. But just so you guys know, it is possible to pick up ATSC 1.0 while in motion, you just have to have a really strong signal and pretty much direct line of sight of the broadcast tower. VLC kept crashing, so I decided to only show the next-gen signal as I drove away from Syracuse. Despite the changing terrain, the signal remained solid on the junk antenna until about 25 miles from the tower in Cortland, New York. This makes sense according to the rabbitears.info coverage map. You can see the terrain kills the signal as soon as you hit that area. While 25 miles may not seem far, it's a huge improvement considering I was using a very basic antenna in a moving vehicle. This means there's a good chance people within 25 miles of a broadcast tower can use an indoor antenna with the new next-gen TV standard, depending on the layout of their area. With ATSC 1.0, most people had problems with indoor antennas even as close as 5 miles of broadcast towers, and especially if they were using a junk antenna. I forgot I had it down here. Especially if they were using an antenna like this, I can guarantee you they had problems picking up reception inside. For any of you wondering how far a next-gen signal can go with a good antenna, check out my demonstration of ATSC 3.0 in Pittsburgh. Click the card in the corner to watch it, or follow my link in the description of the video. The future is definitely bright for free over-the-air TV with this new standard. It will still be a good 5-10 to years before its full potential will be achieved, as there is very limited bandwidth with both ATSC 1.0 and NextGen TV coexisting in certain markets. For now, NextGen TV is in certain markets, but the picture quality and range will be limited until 1.0 shuts down. This probably won't happen for at least another 10 years. Click the video above to find out which markets have next-gen TV broadcasts and why we are still in the very early stages of the whole thing. I will make a video about what tuners are next-gen capable in the future, but understand there's very little out there besides HD Home Run Connect 4K and some very high-end TV models. There isn't really much of a reason to buy a next-gen tuner unless you're a huge antenna nerd like myself or you can verify your reception problems are related to multipath interference from trees and cars. I can tell you most times reception problems are related to a non-optimal antenna setup. If you have reception problems, consider an antenna recommendation from me at antennamanpa.com. I found that most people do not have the right antenna for their area, which would really limit how many channels they get and how reliable their reception is. Thanks again for watching this video. A huge thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or is a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos helped you cut the cord or if you just think they're cool and would like to help support them while gaining exclusive perks, such as behind the scenes content, access to my videos ad free one day early, and direct contact with me, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man or click the join button in this video. If you're on Facebook, you can like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA. If you're not on Facebook and would like to receive email updates whenever I post new videos, feel free to sign up to my email list. I attach a link in the description of the video. And if you are signed up to my email list, make sure you add the email address info at antennamanpa.com to your address book. Otherwise, my emails might be sent to your spam folder. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord cutting and antenna related videos, and have an awesome day.